has made it very clear on this, uh, uh, on this matter that all options are on the table. China on Tuesday expressed opposition to United States unilateral sanctions against Venezuela, reiterated that this act will only complicate more the situation there and called on the United States to, re to take responsibility for the consequences it could trigger. Uh, this is a country that is very rich in oil resources. There's no reason why these resources shouldn't be used for the economic benefit of the people there. There's no reason for the poverty and the starvation and the humanitarian crisis. So, uh, we, on sanctions, we always evaluate sanctions continuously, both existing sanctions as well as future sanctions. So we will carefully be looking at the effectiveness of these and whether we need additional sanctions. Now, I would just tell you, speaking for Treasury, uh, I want to thank uh, all the, the, the large number of government workers who came in. Uh, I will tell you, as it relates to specifically the sanctions area, people have been working around the clock, uh, and we couldn't have gotten this done without the enormous support of all the people who came in. So quite the contrary, we weren't in disarray. Again, I want to thank all the important people who helped out. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhang Shuang told in a press briefing that Washington, with its interference and punitive sanctions, will lead to a deterioration in the living conditions of the Venezuelan people. The historical experience has shown that actions like this only make any situation worse, he recalled. The United States should take responsibilities for the serious consequences it will cause instead of helping to resolve the problem. Stressing Beijing, the foreign ministry spokesman warned and stressed that Beijing rejection of sanctions against the state-owned oil company Petrolos de Venezuela. Well, uh, let me just comment that we will be releasing FAQs with the general licenses to explain a lot of these issues, but uh, effective immediately, uh, any purchases of Venezuelan oil by U.S. entities, money will have to go into blocked accounts. Now, I've been in touch with many of the, the refineries. There is a significant amount of oil that's at sea that's already been paid for. That oil will continue to come to the United States. If uh, the people in Venezuela want to continue to sell us oil, as long as that money goes into blocked accounts, we'll continue to take it. Otherwise, we will not be buying it. Uh, and, and again, we have issued general licenses, so uh, the refineries in the United States can continue to operate. So I expect, in the short term, very modest impacts on the U.S. refineries. We've been working with them closely on these issues. Did you walk the U.S. oil industry through what's going to happen here in advance, or are they hearing about this for the first time right now? Uh, they're hearing about this now, but, uh, you know, I generally say, uh, we have, obviously, we made a press release uh, recently. I think we've indicated certain things, so we had not disclosed to anybody these sanctions in advance. But I think a lot of people have been preparing for this over the last month. With the blocked accounts, what would be the mechanism and what would be the timeline if there is this peaceful transfer of government? How would the money go from the blocked accounts back and would be Juan Guaido would be the operating person to take it back and receive it back if he's put, put into power? So uh, let me just comment that uh, in general, okay, uh, as, as we've said in the past, the purpose of sanctions is to change behavior. So when there is a recognition that PDVSA is the property of the, the rightful uh, rulers, the rightful leaders, president, then, then indeed that money will be available to Guaido. Uh, we will be working with them on the money at the, in the blocked account and whether that can be used for them. As part of this, uh, limitations on selling oil products uh, as, as part of the sanctions. As regards to an embargo, we're not going to make any comment on that today. We don't comment on future actions. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Maduro seemed to anticipate the actions that you've announced today in the briefing room. He warned that CITGO is the property of the Venezuelan state, and he further said that we are the only ones who can decide its fate. What is your response to Mr. Maduro? Again, it's the, the property of the, the, the Venezuelan people and the proper and, and rightful leaders of, of the country. So we, we agree with that. He's not the proper leader of the country at this time. And I've said these, these are valuable assets that we are protecting for the benefit of the Venezuelan people. On the question about the impact on the markets, um, Amen asked you about refineries. You said it'll have a modest impact. What do American drivers need to know about the possible impact of the price of the pump, if any at all? 
Well, first, let me say, you know, uh, there's been a big reduction in the overall price of oil. And uh, particularly since we instituted the Iran sanctions, I think, you know, we've been very careful in making sure that these costs don't impact the American consumer. Uh, gas prices are almost as low as they've been in a very long period of time. Uh, these refineries impact a specific part of the country, and I think, as you've said, we're very comfortable that they have enough supply that we don't expect any big impact in, in the short term. We are very determined, whether it's in the case of Iran or it's the case in here, to use sanctions to use them in the right way. And we're very comfortable that we've coordinated with the Department of Energy and other people on, on this mechanism. A comment that, uh, in general, I've said this before, markets are not always efficient. They move in different directions. So I want to be careful in not speculating on markets. I mean, I think kind of oil went up a lot right before the Iran sanctions. We were surprised that it went up so much. I think, you know, President Trump had been on the phone with many world leaders and making sure there was ample supply. Prices came down. Uh, the U.S. is a big exporter of oil, so there's a balance here. In, but, you know, I, th I think where oil prices are now reflect the supply and demand in, in the market. And as I've said, we're dealing with Venezuelan oil that is a rather modest part of our overall supply. Again, we're a net exporter of energy. Uh, we are particularly concerned that there were a handful of refineries that had a dependence on Venezuelan oil. Uh, I think they read the tea leaves. They reduced that dependence significantly along the way. Uh, most of them have in the neighborhood of 10 percent or less of their dependent on Venezuelan oil. So I don't expect that people will see an impact uh, on the gas pumps. Are you talking about sweet, sweet or sour, sour crude, crude from Venezuela? Sweet or sour crude? I, again, I'm not going to get into all the specifics of the different oil markets, but let me just say that most of these refineries, this is, this is about 10 percent or less. There's plenty of supply at sea that's already been paid for. So there's inventories. Um, there's, there, there's been excess oil. I'm sure many of our friends in the Middle East will be happy to make up the supply as we push down Venezuela's supply. But let me again just emphasize, you know, the right outcome is a transition for PDVSA. The right outcome for the Venezuelan people is to have these companies rebuilt and to make sure that they get out of poverty. It's a complete tragedy to have the humanitarian crisis in a country that has very rich resources. China said it will maintain invariable cooperation with Venezuela in different areas, in addition to reiterating its recognition of the legitimate government of President Nicolas Maduro. The White House announced, announced on Monday additional sanctions against the state-owned petroleum company. Amid the growing harassment to Caracas authorities and the head of constitutional state, China concluded. Uh, first of all, on Venezuela, we had an exchange uh, with the ministers uh, in, uh, um, in the first part of the Council, uh, where I updated the ministers on the common uh, position we have uh, taken in the occasion of the inauguration of Maduro, where you know that the European Union has had a common, uh, a common view, a common statement, and uh, a common uh, approach. Uh, at the end of last week, over the weekend, um, the um, heads of mission uh, of the European Union member states present in Caracas had uh, meetings with Maduro, but also uh, with the new board of the National Assembly, uh, in view of keeping all channels open, passing our positions in a very clear manner, uh, manner as we've always done. And I've also updated uh, ministers on the work we're doing uh, to establish an international contact group that might um, start uh, to work um, in the coming weeks, uh, hopefully in February. Uh, the decision is not taken yet. We are completing our work with uh, uh, the partners in the region and international players. Uh, we believe that uh, next to uh, our pressure policy that is in place, and that is very well known and is not changing, uh, even more so now that situation is, is deteriorating, 
um, we want to uh, try to contribute to open up a space for, um, for a political uh, process that at the moment is absent. So again, without false expectations and illusions that are not, uh, uh, do not have reasons to exist at the moment on the contrary, uh, the work on the International Contact Group is continuing and we hope to finalize this work uh, in the coming weeks. So I hope I will manage to give uh, um, um, more positive uh, um, uh, news uh, uh, for the Foreign Affairs Council in February. On Nicaragua, as you said, we adopted conclusions today. I cannot foresee what the next steps will be, but I can tell you we are extremely worried for the situation. Um, it is not to be underestimated at all, and the signal today is this. Um, we pay attention. Uh, it is relevant for us, even if the presence of European citizens is less relevant than in Venezuela. Uh, we do care about the situation there, not only on the political level, uh, but also in terms of humanitarian support and in support of human rights defenders in the country. We're doing our best uh, to um, play a positive role in that context. Thank you.